Hello and welcome to another video guide about Grand Stream Access Points in GWN7600 series. In this video, we're going to cover Wi-Fi signal strength and highlight the major factors that might contribute to the reduction in signal strength. We're also going to provide some basic guidelines to follow to improve the signal quality on the wireless devices and the access points. Generally speaking, a stronger Wi-Fi signal is an indication of a faster and more reliable connection. To distinguish between a strong and weak signal, we first need to understand how a Wi-Fi signal strength is measured. 802.11 standards generally use the Received Signal Strength Indicator or RSSI metric to measure how strong the received signal is, and it is usually displayed in negative dBm values. The closer to zero, the stronger the signal is. Most vendors use an RSSI range from 0 to 100, while others might use a different range. This is why, in some cases, you might have two client devices from two different manufacturers connected to the same access point and from the exact same location showing different RSSI values for the RF signal. Therefore, Many client devices use percentages to represent the signal quality to avoid the confusion caused by incompatible RSSI at the wireless client devices. In computers and smartphones, the signal quality is generally represented by four curved lines. The more that are filled, the stronger the signal is. So, as shown in this image, one of the main aspects affecting the Wi-Fi signal quality is distance. The further you move from the access points, the weaker the Wi-Fi signal is going to be, because the RF signal weakens as it propagates. And this will be displayed in the RSSI value or the Wi-Fi signal indicator at the wireless client device. The distance from the access points does not only affect the reliability of the Wi-Fi connection, but it also reduces the speed of data transmission. Given the fact that a strong signal is required for a more complex modulation scheme, which provides us with higher data rate, wireless devices will automatically switch to lower data rate transmission using less complex modulation schemes as they move further from the access point. In wireless technology, this is referred to as DRS or dynamic rate switching. For example, 802.11n and 802.11ac use the MCS tables to decide on the data rate to use based on the, on the detected RSSI and some other elements. So the table in front of us shows the data rates that will be negotiated with, when using one spatial stream and a 20 MHz channel. For example, when the RSSI level is at minus 59, the data rate that will be provided is 78 megabits per second. And if the RSSI is at minus 70 dBm, then the data rate will switch to 39 megabits per second. And when the RSSI goes down to minus 82 dBm, the data rate can go all the way down to 6.5 megabits per second. And this is using the GOT interval of 800 nanosecond. And as you notice also, the lower the RSSI, uh, the less complex modulation method that is being used. And that's why we end up uh, with those low rate uh, numbers. So to improve the signal reception, it is always important to place the access point where it can reach all corners. If the location spreads over a large area and the signal is not able to reach all corners, it is a good practice to add other access points to cover the areas with weak signal. So in addition to distance, physical obstructions may weaken the signal as it passes through them. Usually construction and office materials will absorb a portion of the RF signal when it is traveling from an access point to a wireless client and vice versa. In the example shown here, as the RF signal passes through the thick brick wall, it loses strength as indicated by the dBm value. So the signal strength just drops from minus 55 dBm to minus 70 dBm. And basically the absorption amount of the signal depends on the type of material used. 
So the table shown here provides the Wi-Fi signal loss based on the type of construction material. And it is obvious that concrete walls uh, can cause significant signal loss compared to glass or lumber. So to boost Wi-Fi signal through walls and objects, many would simply increase the transmit power of the access point, which is something that is supported on the GWN access point. So while increasing the transmit power would help in such case, it is important to know that the Wi-Fi signal does not only get absorbed, but it can also get reflected by hard objects. And these signal reflections can propagate in many directions and they can eventually cause interference in the wireless network. Instead, there are a couple of things that can be done to improve signal quality for users behind obstruction objects. First, when possible, use 2.4 GHz band, which penetrates hard objects better than 5 GHz. If that does not help improve the signal quality, deploying additional access points in the area will be necessary. So in addition to RSSI, which is used to indicate if a signal is strong or weak, there is SNR or signal to noise ratio, which is used to measure the RF signal power related to the power level of the noise floor. Or as shown here, it is a difference between the signal strength and the noise floor. And the noise floor generally is the unwanted RF signal generated by electronic devices and background noises. And when the noise floor levels get too close to the received signal strength, the RF signal might not be detected, or in the best case scenario, the received data might just get corrupted. This is why you should always test for the noise floor in your wireless environment using one of the available tools and applications. And usually fixing SNR issues uh, involves two main approaches. The first one would be to decrease the noise by ensuring that the AP is not placed next to noisy devices such as servers, TVs, refrigerators, and other electronic devices. And the second approach would be to deploy additional access points to increase the received signal quality in all areas. And adjusting the transmission power of an AP can also help. However, this should be used with caution because many times you find an AP that is deployed to cover a small area and it is configured with high transmit power, it results in a, in a significant signal interference in adjacent areas. So here are some basic guidelines that might help improve the signal strength of your access point and your wireless devices. First, make sure you place the access point in a central location to allow the RF signal to reach all corners of the house or office. Uh, ideally, placing the access point in a high location will increase the Wi-Fi coverage significantly. Second, avoid placing the access point near electronic devices or appliances that generate noise or interference such as TVs, refrigerators, loud fans, etc. Number three, remove physical obstacles that can impede signal propagation and also ensure that the minimum RSSI is higher than minus seven, uh, 70 dBm throughout the coverage area. So if you notice that the RSSI goes below that value, it is always recommended to add more access points as needed to cover uh, any area with very weak signal strength or any dead spots. Uh, running a Wi-Fi analyzer uh, it, it is something that is always recommended so you can find the best channels and bands to use for your Wi-Fi network. Especially when your office is surrounded by multiple locations or offices that are using their own Wi-Fi. So the signal from their access points can actually interfere with the signal that is being transmitted and received by your access point. So using the Wi-Fi analyzer will help you decide which channels to use and also which band to select for your Wi-Fi network. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.